Welcome to the Time Has Come podcast. My name is Graham Wardle, and today we're going to be taking a journey through the forest and back through time. Let's go. Well, my friends, this is my first video episode of a solo cast where it's just me talking with you. And I thought, what better place to do it than out in nature, in the woods, and in the forest, which I feel is my home in my heart. So this episode is going to be about me reflecting on the past three years of this show, what I've learned, my favorite moments, and also what's coming in season two, because this is going to be the last episode of season one. I'm going to take some time off, go into the creative cave, listen for guidance, and really feel what's going to come for season two of this show. But for right now, in this episode, let's take a walk back through all the episodes that we've done and explore it together. So looking back over the past three years, I really had no idea where the show was going to go, and I didn't know I'd be doing it for three years. But it was really now having this sort of perspective I can see that this show was all about me finding my voice. You know, I was working on a television show, Heartland, for 14 years. And as I've shared with different people and different interviews, I was finding it difficult to hear my own voice. And about three years ago, right around this time, I was sitting meditating in my living room and I had my hand on my heart. And I just had this feeling and this name come to me, which was the time has come. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Is this a podcast? What is this gonna be? And now looking back, I know that it was about me finding my voice. It was about me rediscovering the parts of me that I kind of lost because I went pretty deep into playing a character on a television show and, and exploring that. And I really enjoyed the process of acting on that show and working with so many people, so many great and other talented artists. But it really revealed to me that on a deep level, there was parts of me that I hadn't accepted, I hadn't loved, that I was working on still, and I needed to take care of those parts of me. I really needed to focus on that. And this podcast was really an opportunity for me to find my voice, to see the areas of me that needed to be loved, and to explore and listen to others on their leaps of faith outside of their comfort zone, and celebrate that with them. So. You know, looking back now, I can see all of this clearly, but in the moment, I didn't know where I was going. I was just following my heart. And, you know, from doing episodes, just audio, to doing episodes with video, I learned a lot. And I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunity and the experience of it all, because it really showed me that you can really teach yourself anything. You go on YouTube, you go online, you can watch videos is what I did. You know, I didn't know half of the things, how to do a lot of the stuff with uh, audio and, and green screens and videos, but I just watched videos and I talked to friends and got help. And it was really this process of like just one step at a time. And that's what I talk a lot about with my poetry and um, the people that subscribe to it is I say, you know, your leap of faith is always, it's one step. You don't know what's coming next and you have to trust and you have to have faith. And in many ways, that was the process of creating my podcast. I was like, I don't know where this is going. (laughs) I don't know what's next, but I just kept following my heart and feeling into it. So it was really uh, a blessing and I'm very grateful for you all, your support, you joining me and exploring it with me and, and really being by my side as I was venturing into the unknown and finding my voice again. So I just want to thank you all for watching and being here and supporting me for these past three years. So every episode of my podcast, I would ask my guests the magic painting question. And the question goes like this. If Mandy Morris had on her wall a magic painting, and any time you looked at this magical painting, you could feel any type of feeling that you wanted to feel to any degree that you wanted to feel it, what feeling would you choose? And what would your painting look like? What would be on it or what kind of colors would you want on it? And it was always an interesting answer. It was always so fascinating to hear what they would say and, and learn from them their own unique inspiration or, or driving force that I could, always, I could sense it, but I could never quite articulate it. So whenever they would share it with me, it was always like, of course that's what it is. That, that matches up with what the, the vibe and the energy I'm getting with you. And, I really appreciated everybody sharing from their heart 
and exploring it and then really demonstrating for someone who had never felt that feeling before what it would feel like. That I would feel God's presence in everything I did. The feeling would be one of delight. Feeling that it would convey as one of victory and one of accomplishing the task, the campaign. A warm hug on your heart that gives you an energy to move into the space. That definitely speaks to me. Um, it's actually to replace this painting I have over here that says hustle, the most important word ever, which I don't agree with anymore. I feel love is the most mm. important word ever. And I hope all of you listening to the episodes of my podcast really got an opportunity to feel it for yourself too, because that is a real focus that I wanted to include in the show was you might not agree with this guest. They might not be your cup of tea, so to speak, but we can all empathize and relate to the emotions that they shared of what they would want to feel most of peace or of joy or of laughter. Um, there were so many amazing interpretations of that question. And probably my favorite was Mandy Morris, where she said she wanted hers to come to life and she could step into it. And it's a moving painting. So it's, it's not a painting. It's like, you know, alive and it's something you can step okay. into. And, oh, uh, damn. Whoa. <laughs> We're going. I love it. Okay. <laughs> and that ultimately blew my mind because I was like, that is what this is about. We have the opportunity to create our magic painting, our, our magical life, the life that we want, and step into it. Not just be something we dream about, but actually move into it. And I loved how Mandy was just naturally took it to that place and said, hey, I want my painting to come alive and I step into it. And so that's what I want to say to all of you is that Maybe you've shared with me already your magic painting and what it would be for you. And, and it's kind of a cool idea. Well, I want to invite you to think about how you could step into that painting. How could that become a reality for you? Because that's what I feel is the evolution of this question. And really, our lives is we can dream, but if we don't actually put it into action, then what's it good for? Do we just use it to pacify ourselves and to pass the time? Or do we actually take steps towards it and make it real? And it changes along the way. That's what I have learned, you know, with this podcast. I, I thought it was going to be one way and I allowed myself to be guided and go, you know what? This isn't actually what it's meant to be. It's supposed to be this way. And it's, it evolves step by step. And I want to include you in that process. This is not just about me talking and sharing my voice and my thoughts. This is about including you and us doing this journey together because what fun is it to get to the goal if you don't have those, those around you that you love and you care about, right? You wanna connect with other people and bring people along on the journey. So that's the magic painting and, and I really want to encourage you to make yours real and step into it. So my magic painting over the last three years has changed. And, you know, at first it was this feeling of uh, cosmic love. And now it has become this feeling of being guided and not necessarily knowing which way to go, but feeling it in my heart and knowing that I'm on the right path. It's a, it's a fantastic feeling because there's an element of excitement uncertainty but you have a groundedness in your in your being and like you feel that you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing but you have no idea where it's going to go and it reminds me of when I was a kid and I would wake up in the morning and I would be like I don't know what this day holds but I'm excited for it and then somewhere along the way as I got older I remember feeling like oh I know exactly what this day is going to be like and I'm maybe I'm not so excited or there's some things I'm excited about but some other things I'm not and this feeling of guidance and of faith brings me back to that childhood wonder and awe of being in love with life and not knowing where I'm going to end up. And also being in service too, because I feel when you're guided, you're really in service to others. So that's how my feeling has changed over the past three years. So one of my favorite aspects of this podcast was taking it on the road this summer with Carrie James and exploring Alberta, visiting Amber again and interviewing her one more time, interviewing 
David Parker, and before I left, hanging out with Mr. Brian Peckford, the Honorable Brian Peckford, who is the last living architect of our Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. But this road trip this summer was just really, it was really sort of what I feel is coming next. And I don't know what's next, but I feel like it's something on the road. I feel like it's similar in theme. Carrie and I traveling the road in our RVs and having campfires and exploring Alberta and shooting footage and making projects. It was really fun. And I have never experienced anything like it. It was, it was challenging, you know, living in a motor home and, you know, cooking off your stove and um, <laughs> all the different things that come with, you know, mobile living. But it was fun. It was fun to work from the road. And I had one of those satellites from Starlink to have internet and upload footage. And sometimes there would be a tree in the way and you couldn't get your upload working. So you'd have to go use the, uh, the RV campground Wi-Fi, which was always spotty and never very solid right but those were the challenges that made it fun and and memorable too so this summer specifically was my favorite part of the podcast taking it on the road and i think that's where we're headed in season two i don't know yet but i kind of have a feeling like it'll be more mobile it'll be more adventurous so that's what i wanted to share with you some of my favorite moments uh of this podcast really is in the last little bit here about taking on the road and really adventure with this show and and really challenging myself and Carrie as well how we make the show on the road how we you know cut it together on the road and how we make it work and Carrie has a whole mobile editing studio in his van where he's got his screen and his laptop let's get into it the time has come for us to welcome Andy Morris to the podcast let me try to paint of a kingdom without walls and the food Welcome everybody to another episode of the Time Has Come podcast. I am joined by Sean Zimmer. There's so many stars to see. Well, that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Losing fake friends, I gave up living for a lie. But Welcome to the Time Has Come podcast. My name is Graham Wardle, and today. Take me Welcome to the Time Has Come podcast. I'm joined here with David Park. Very quick, thank you. Impromptu. Yeah, podcast. we just so decided to do it, and it just happened. What I'm looking forward to the most in continuing for however season two shapes up is the adventures of new places. I love meeting new, pe new, new people and trying new restaurants, getting involved in the community, making new friends. And in terms of what I'm looking forward to the least, uh, <laughs> it would probably be, uh, you know, when things go wrong with your, when you're, when you're living on the road in a van, so to speak, a motorhome, there's always something that goes wrong. Your toilet backs up, there's a leak, you know, uh, who knows, but there's always something that goes wrong with your house because you're driving your house and you're taking it everywhere you go. So that's what I look forward to the least, I guess you could say, is like the, the hiccups, those hiccups that you're kind of like, oh man, uh, my toilet's leaking and now there's water, <laughs> water all over the, the, my living room floor, basically, because my toilet is right next to my living room. Um, so that's what I would say I'm looking forward to the least. So for now, I guess you could call the road my home. I mean, for the past 14 years, uh, or I should say for the 14 years I was working on Heartland, you know, I was moving all the time and really just finding where home was for me. And it, and it really is on the road, but it's really, it's really the people and the activities that I'm involved in that make me feel at home. So if I'm having fun, connecting with people, and sharing my gifts and, and supporting others, that's where I feel at home, you know? It's like, those are the relationships that mean something to me. Eventually, I would like to have a physical, rooted home. But at this point in my life, I feel I'm being called to, to be on the road, and the road will be my home, so, yeah, for now. Being on the road with this podcast, I feel is important 
on a, on a couple of different levels. But one level particularly that I want to talk about is our country, Canada, where I'm from, is changing, whereas many countries as well are changing. But my home country is changing. Lots of things are happening in the world, as I'm sure many of you know. And I feel right now called to continue to be on the move and on the road because I think it's really important that we find our community again, that we find each other again, because in the last few years, we've been really separated, polarized, and divided. And I feel I've been blessed with opportunities in my life and platforms, and I want to make use of them to celebrate life, to bring people together, and to really rediscover what it means to be Canadian and what it means to be in this community that we have here, in this beautiful country that we have. So, you know, there's possibilities of, you know, me moving to a home base to maybe Alberta or maybe another part of the country. I don't know. I know I'll be guided. And most importantly, it's not necessarily about where I end up, but it's the, it's the, the journey that we take, right? And I'm really excited to see where this goes and find ways to celebrate more of what we have and bring people back together because like I said, it's, it's, it's been really tough for a lot of people. I know a lot of people have lost jobs and um, lost loved ones, um, felt the, the pressures of what's, go what's been going on the past few years. And I think it's important to have opportunities and activities and stories that are told about the things that connect us all and bring us together. There is always enough <laughs> dividing voices and polarizing ideas. So I think it's important to focus on and include the ones that unify us and bring us together. And here's a look back at some of my favorite moments from the past three years. Specifically, you told a story about a gentleman or a man or a warrior of some sort back in the day. Can you tell yeah, everybody that story? Yeah, the legend of to, Cincinnati. To, to kick yeah, this off, so, because I think um, this is fantastic. I'm going to look at all the different yeah, cameras. Yeah, you can look at all I'm the cameras. You can talk to me. <laughs> I yeah, talk to you. <laughs> That one, I will bless everyone that I possibly can with it when I receive it, and only if it is in the highest good of all, and I have taken all of existence into account, if it is meant for me, then I welcome it in, and if not, I surrender and I am okay with not receiving it. Life is really precious. It's stunningly short. There isn't really anything beyond joy. For vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of gold and daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, Fluttering and dancing in the breeze. 10,000 saw I at a glance. Fluttering and dancing. Okay. <laughs> I would love an elephant, but they don't have elephants in Canada. We don't have elephants, do we? I'm just going to take a deep breath. Do we? We don't have elephants. Have you ever been to the Calgary Zoo? Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. But like not natural elephants. Oh, Can't wow. get natural elephants. I don't even know what to <laughs> yeah. say right now. No, I know. We're just going to pretend that that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hide behind pride and a desire to impress. Mm. I just want to be real, man. And if that means me being vulnerable and exposed, that's fine. That's it. I'm yeah. not a, I'm not afraid of anything that this world can throw at me. I mean, like the song Home says, you can call me a fool, you can take my life away, arrest me, shipwreck me, to live as Christ, to die as gain. So take me home. One of the biggest blessings of doing a podcast and getting to interview a wide range of people is really being inspired by them and learning from them. One specific memory that comes to mind is when I was talking to the Honorable Brian Peckford and he was talking about what it means to be a good politician, which for I think many of us, you know, we don't view politicians or lawyers in a good light. You know, we always think that they lie and alter your motives. And I loved what Mr. Peckford said where he talked about being a good person, having good values. And those are the attributes that really help a politician shape public policy and lead their community in a positive way. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. And, and the attitude that 
we unconsciously have that politicians will always go back on their word or, you know, not do the best thing for the people is not beneficial to us. I think we need to focus on the politicians and the people that are serving their communities that are doing it in a correct way and upholding their values, celebrate them, and also encourage the younger generations too to have values. You know, that's something we've kind of lost on a, on a bigger scale, but having values, sticking to them, seeing them through, whether you're in politics or not, I think makes all the difference in the quality of your life. So I really appreciated that about Mr. Brian Peckford there sharing that and being such a genuine human being and what he contributed to our country um, with his voice and his efforts is just truly remarkable. And I feel very blessed to have been able to talk with him and interview him. Yeah. So aside from reflecting on my podcast in the last three years, I've also always included in my solo cast a bit more about my personal life and my journey and the lessons that I've learned as I've gone older. And I just wanted to share this with you because sometimes there's somebody out there watching my podcast and maybe they resonate with me or, you know, the character that I've played on Heartland. And I feel it's important sometimes to share things from your past that are, were challenging because I know there are people out there that go through similar challenges. So I want to share with you all a challenge I had when I was very young and I was having difficulty with uh, some circumstances in my life. Namely, I went through some abuse when I was in high school and it was very, very difficult because it was sexual abuse and it was so painful that I wanted to end my life because I couldn't see how to continue my life. And I know many people struggle with suicide and suicidal thoughts and depression. And mental health is a big topic these days. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about my past and where I've gotten to now. Because maybe for somebody out there, they're going through a tough time and they're not seeing a lot of reasons to continue. Or there's a lot of pain in their life or they don't see a way forward. And that was for me what led me to a dark place of thinking about taking my own life. And I want to say I'm very grateful that I had a good family. And it's because of my family and how loving they are that I decided to stay because I didn't want to cause more pain. And the pain that I was feeling inside was so great. And the only way I could think of to stop it was to end my life. But I didn't want to cause pain to my family and the people that I still loved and cared about. So I was at this stalemate situation and it was at that point that I was like, well, I can't continue on because this is so painful, but I can't kill myself because I don't want to cause any more pain. I just want the pain to stop. It was at that point that I made a promise to myself. And the promise was, in this very <laughs> dark place, I will continue living, but only if I find some semblance of significance and that to me in that moment was fame. That, that was the only thing I could think of in that moment that I felt would bring me a sense of worthiness or value after feeling so devalued and so worthless from my experience. And so that was the promise I made myself when I was younger. And I worked very hard at it. And what I realized over the years of being involved with acting and being on a television show, becoming known, people asking for autographs and photos, and doing all the different things that I got to be a part of, they were all fun and they were all great. But none of it filled that part of me that wasn't loved, that wasn't seen, and that wasn't valued. And that really was the journey of my soul in these last, uh, however so many years since that, that event, has been going back to that place inside of me, that younger version of myself, telling him he's loved, telling him he's worthy, that he did nothing wrong, it wasn't his fault, and that I'm proud of him. And only from that place of love and acceptance of that younger version of myself have I been able to step forward and create my life from a place of fullness and of joy and of feeling just blessed to be alive. 
So if you're someone who's going through a challenging time or struggling with the circumstances of life and you know, you're, you've contemplated going down a darker path, I just want to say to you that I know from my personal experience that there are blessings and that there are gifts that are beyond what you could imagine if you continue to move forward and you may only see that one step that's right in front of you. Take that step and just focus on that. And as you move forward and as you allow yourself to be guided, people will come into your sphere, your friend circle, your environment, and they will give you the next piece. And you will move forward from there and you will find the next step. And before you know it, you will look back and you'll say, that was a completely different life. I see that was a past version of me, but I've grown so far beyond that version of me. And I'm so grateful that I didn't choose to end it prematurely because that's how I feel. I am so blessed and so grateful to be alive and to come from that place of such darkness and pain and to allow that to move through me, to learn from it, and then to want to serve and share with others is one of the best feelings I could ever imagine. And I want that for other people too, because I know it's, you know, if you're struggling, I know it's for you as well. It's not just for one person. Everybody is entitled to this transformation when you move through your pain. And it's not easy and your situation is probably a lot different than mine. But I just wanted to share that story with you and, and open my heart to all of you about that because I think it's important that we be honest. Unfortunately, sexual abuse is one in three girls and one in five boys. So it happens a lot more than people are aware of. And I think it's a conversation that we need to have more awareness around, more compassion around, and uh, focus on the growth and the, the, the proper education <laughs> around this issue so that people can heal and move forward and have a healthy sexual energy, sexual life, sex, sexual expression uh, that's balanced and is not coming from a place that is uh, tormented and abused. Thanks for listening to that <laughs> story of mine. Sometimes in life, we feel the need to retreat or go into a creative cave and rejuvenate and relax and really tune into our hearts and a higher power, however you see that. And that's the phase that I'm in right now and that I was speaking about at the beginning of this podcast where after season one of this podcast and before season two starts, I wanted to take some time just to go internal and feel guided to what's next for me. And that process is a detox and that's why I'm going to be taking some time off social media and um, the internet for the most part and just being quiet. I've only been detoxing or in the creative cave so to speak for about a week now but I can already feel my energy coming back and my focus coming back and that's really helped me um, with my writing of my second book so I have a, a new book of poetry that's going to be coming out very soon and I've been focusing on that and working on that and that's why I've decided to move into this time of reflection and of detox <laughs> to allow myself to really tune in and honor this creative process. And I wanted to share that with all of you because I have a few friends out there that have chosen to do something similar, take some time off and go live their magic painting or go explore their heart and give themselves that time to just breathe and to feel themselves. I think so much of our world today is clouded and full with noise and entertainment and activities and it's all fun and it's all great. It's just a lot. And so if you're not able to balance that, it can be stifling to your own voice, to those whispers that come to your heart. And so that's the, the phase that I'm in that I wanted to share with you all and also invite you. Maybe you know, you're watching this and you're like, man, I need to do something like that too. Well, maybe this is your time. Maybe it's not, but maybe it is. Take some time off the phone, off social media, off watching movies, and just be present. Just be silent and, and listen to your heart. 
maybe you still have to go to jo your job or your work, got kids to take care of or responsibilities, but in those times where you have some free time that you just go for a walk in the woods, take some time off, work on that book that you've always been wanting to write or travel to that place that you've always wanted to travel. With all the changes in our world that are going on, I think it can be very easy to get caught up in the fear and the chaos of the world and we forget that we have our own spiritual journey, we have our own evolution that's occurring and we need to honor that and that's what I feel is the stage that I'm at right now is taking some time just to honor this and to really feel into it because I can't tell you how many times I've like said to myself, oh this is the way something's going to be, this is what I want to do and then I I pause and I go, I'm just going to sit here for a second and listen. And I listen and I go, you know what, actually, when I get quiet, I'm actually, I actually feel called to go this way, to do this. And if I was just busy and just kind of do, you miss those opportunities. So I have found over and over again, time and time again, that if you allow yourself to be guided, if you give yourself the space and time to listen, you will do far less grunt work and get far more benefit and impact because the work that you do do is connected to your heart. Well, that's it, my friends. That's the end of this solo cast of this season of my podcast. I hope you enjoyed this time together walking through the woods. The time has come for me now to take a break, to take a step back, to go into the creative cave, and I will see you all very soon.